Are you ready to accelerate the growth of your business? Welcome to the Revenue Growth Podcast. This is the place for business owners, sales leaders, and marketing professionals to get ideas and inspiration to drive exponential revenue growth. Each week, you'll get actionable insights from the world's leading marketing and sales thought leaders and practitioners. Are you ready to grow? Let's join our host, Daryl Amy, author of Revenue Growth Engine. Welcome back to the Revenue Growth Podcast. Your host, Daryl Amy, here today with an incredible guest, David Newman. I'm so excited about the conversation we're about to have. You're going to want to grab a pen and a notepad. In fact, maybe two notepads for this one. It's going to be packed with practical ideas you can put to work right away. I'm on a mission to help 10,000 purpose-driven companies double their revenue so we can generate a million jobs at great companies and $10 billion in new giving. And so if that fires you up, you're at the right place. We're here on a mission to grow revenue so we can grow impact. And I want to say a huge thank you to everybody in the Revenue Growth Engine audience, especially those of you who participated in the One Ideal Client Away Challenge. We had a great event together getting focus on our ideal client profiles. I'm sure that's going to come up in my conversation with David here today. But here's the good news. Since we ran it on a week when many of you were on spring break, we're going to run it again. So April 10th through 14th, four high impact meetings for 45 minutes, and you're going to leave with a clear focus on who your ideal client is, the value of that ideal client, and some ideas on how to go get more of them and uh, cross sell so you can maximize your revenue. I'm so excited about that. The One Ideal Client Away Challenge if you'll register at oneidealclientaway.com, use the code podcast for a special thank you for hearing it right here on this show. We'll look forward to you getting clarity and focus on the types of ideal clients that can create a flywheel of revenue growth for your business. Wow, we've got a great conversation queued up today. I see David is in the green room, fired up and ready to go. If you haven't met David yet, you're going to love him. He's known as one of the top revenue growth mentors for high fee consultants, coaches, and independent professionals. He's the author of the brand new book, Do It Selling, to help your audience overcome the mystery of sales, land better clients, bigger deals, and higher fees. And whether you're in the, uh, you're an individual uh, professional or whether you are a contributing sales professional marketing leader, I guarantee you this. This next 30 minutes you spend with David Newman, you're going to learn a lot of things you can put to work right away. So without further ado, David, welcome to the Revenue Growth Podcast. It is great to have you here. Thank you, Daryl. It's great. It's great to be here. This will be fun. It is going to be fantastic. And look, this is what I love about this is this is like instant action. Do it selling. Like, let's do it. Let's not just talk about it. Let's get it done. And I've just got my hands on this book last week. It's I apologize. It's already dog-eared. I mean, it's a beautiful book. It's for salespeople like me that like pictures <laughs> all the way through. Uh, totally. But actually, what, I, what it's really practical about is every chapter you do it. At the end of each brief chapter, there's something you can do like right now that's going to move the ball forward. So Give us the do it vision. Like what's the, what is the vision behind this book and, and what you want people to take away from it? Cause I, I'm getting a lot already out of it, David. Sure. So the, the whole concept behind the do it selling book and the do it selling philosophy is very few people grew up saying, man, I can't wait to grow up and be a salesperson, right? This is almost always an accidental career that you wanted to do something and then somehow you end up in sales. Even the most successful salespeople, sales trainers, sales speakers, they would tell you, I, I really didn't, you know, when I was growing kind of up, fell into I was sales. A kid. It's like, <laughs> okay, Johnny, what do you want to be? I want to be a salesperson, said no kid ever. So the person who is in a sales career, either working as, you know, in sales for a company, working in sales for themselves. Maybe they're in professional services. So they're a consultant, they're a lawyer, they're an engineer, they're, they're someone who loves the work of their work, but they just don't like selling. My mission is to get those people excited. 
about sales and sales conversations and really to see it as the the highest and the best work they can do. It's mm. not about force fitting what you do onto a prospect or making them buy something that's really not in their best interest. It's about inviting people to a conversation about how you can help them. And a lot of times people say, you know, I don't like sales. I didn't get into this business to sell and all this other stuff. And I said, okay, if you don't like the word sales and selling, let's put those, put those on the shelf. Let's replace it with the words I just said, invitation to a conversation. Who's afraid of an invitation? Usually nobody. Uh, end of an invitation is usually a party, bourbon, puppies, barbecue, something <laughs> good happens once you receive an invitation, once you send an invitation. How about a conversation? Who's afraid of a conversation? Usually nobody. What happens in a conversation? We meet new people. We exchange ideas. We build relationships. Perhaps we build a brand new friendship and someone that becomes a lifelong friend. Some of those friendships can be commercialized into a referral, an influencer, an introducer, maybe a client now, maybe a client later. But generally, Daryl, when I say, hey, let's have more invitations to a conversation about how you can help people, that is the first baby step in reducing the fear, reducing the resistance, reducing the hesitation into really professional grade sales and selling. I absolutely love that. And so for everybody that is afraid of the S word, and I think this, this happens in professional services, but I think, David, this also happens inside companies that maybe have a sales team but you, as our friend Mark Hunter says, you don't close a sale, you open a relationship. And so even the folks on the operations team that are delivering the service and all of that, the selling doesn't stop when we get the order. It's only just begin, begun. But reframing this around a conversation, that's powerful around an invitation. We can all do that, which is the whole point of the book do it. <laughs> so everyone pause the podcast right now and invite somebody to a conversation because this is this is the type of, of thing you're going to get out of this book that I absolutely love is there's just no, hey, at the end of this chapter, I, I want you to sit around and ponder what you've learned, meditate on it and uh, not do anything. And this is this is one of the biggest challenges with, I think, selling or the inviting people to conversations is there's a lot of good intention and not enough action. So you unpack some of this at the beginning of the book. Maybe if you'd be so kind enough for those who are stuck in intention without action, what, what would you say to our friends who find themselves there from time to time? Oh my gosh. Well, that's sort of the whole, that's sort of the whole philosophy that only action creates results. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not, uh, and this is why, this is why it's not called think about it selling. It's not called someday <laughs> maybe selling. It's not called, you know, let me ponder some more on it selling. It's about do it selling. And really it's about baby steps. And this is, I've, I've gotten this feedback from a lot of early readers, Daryl. So thank you again for, for thumbing through and for your enthusiastic recommendation. It's about breaking things down into baby steps that lead to big results. So, you know, one conversation at a time, one sales process at a time, one client or customer uh, saying yes to you at a time. You know, everyone wants instant success. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want all the success, all the money, all the clients, all the customers, all the sales to happen. There's no more time space continuum. And unfortunately, <laughs> my friends, there is a time space continuum. But so think about daily activity. Like mm -hmm. literally, I ask myself every morning, what do I need to do today to put fresh targets on my radar? And that's one of the do it selling philosophies is you got to put fresh targets on your radar daily. Now, are we talking about cold calling the universe and spamming, you know, hundreds of people on your LinkedIn or just dial, you know, dialing a uh, hundred numbers and being a moron like that? We are not. We're talking about highly selective, highly researched, intelligent prospecting. And the formula that I put into the book is five a day, five a day. So if you have five prospect contacts, some of them are going to be first contact. Some are going to be second or third conversation. And by contact, I mean phone, email, LinkedIn message, Facebook, text, whatever. Uh, five touches a day that move 
move you one step closer to a check, five a day, always in play. I cannot imagine that you would not be massively more successful in your selling track record if you kept that mantra going. So in the morning, what am I doing to do five a day, always in play, right? Who needs an extra touch? Who needs an extra, um, you know, contact? And then at the end of the day, you can also ask yourself, did I do my five a day? And in case you didn't, boy, oh boy, it could literally be taking 15 seconds and send a text. It could be jumping onto a prospect's LinkedIn and liking and leaving an intelligent comment and or sharing that post. So somehow get on their radar that number one, you still exist. Number two, you still care. Number three, you still want to help them. And there's also a big philosophical mindset here about helping before selling Mm -hmm. and serving before pitching. That's also really important. So uh, one of my early sales mentors, Daryl said, you know, David, you're so concerned about being a better salesperson. I wouldn't worry so much about being a better salesperson. Be a better person. And more sales will happen. (laughs) Like actually care about your prospects, actually care about your clients. And of course, we all do that, but we think that happens after they become a client. So think of all the things that you do after you get a client and after you get a customer. If you did more of those things before they signed on the dotted line. So one of the philosophies, again, and one of the things that we kind of break down exactly how to do it is if you treat more prospects like clients, you will get more clients. So don't save all the amazing magic for after they sign up. Bring some of that to while they're still a prospect. And that's where you're helping them. That's where you're serving them. That's where you're being valuable and relevant so that they're thinking, oh my gosh, this is what it's like before I become a customer, before I become a client. Imagine how amazing it would be if we became a client. So moving that post-sale value into pre-sale value will also move the needle on your results. Ah, I love it. I'm just sparking ideas. I told everybody listening in, get two notepads for this. You're going to have a ton of ideas on this. Every every, uh, chapter, and and some of these chapters are just so tight and to the point, which uh, my sales brain really, 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 really is thankful for. Uh, but one of the things I like in, in number 15 of the 70, uh, 70 action items that you take in this book is called Warm and Fuzzy. And this one was so simple, but I thought it was incredibly powerful. Can you unpack Warm and Fuzzy? We're on, for those who are playing along, we're on page 57. But this was where you said, hey, Look at your circle of allies, friends, oh, yeah. colleagues, and champions. Look at the, the people that you're already in communication with. Yes. Um, and start with people, the last 30 or 40 people that you've emailed, called, texted, messaged on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, right. Twitter, Zoomed with individually or in a group. Like this is a phenomenal, highly overlooked way to start. Because I think a lot of people are paralyzed to go, okay, well, how do I get started in the, you know, there's 500 million people on LinkedIn or whatever the number is today. You know, how do I get started? Well, start with some friendlies. Totally. And that warm network. So warm and fuzzy Mm -hmm. is about start with people that are already in your circle. And most sales professionals and most professional services sellers, Mm -hmm. uh, your, your circle of people is far broader and far deeper than you think. Mm-hmm. So w- one of the strategies, let's say you have an email list and you send out a monthly newsletter, maybe every two weeks you're sending something out. So I want you to look in your MailChimp, look in your constant contact, look, look in your HubSpot. Who has consistently opened your last two or three emails? Imagine if you reached out to them, especially if their domain name is interesting, like us.ibm.com. So they work for a big, (laughs) juicy company that you would love to do business with. Mm -hmm. They're already on your list. They're already opening your emails. They might not work in the department that you would typically sell to. They might not even be a decision maker, but they're obviously engaged with your content. What if you reached out to that person and said, hey, Barbara, David Newman here from Do It Marketing. I noticed that you've opened up the last two or three of our emails, and I'm really honored that you give us that spot in your email inbox. I'm curious, 
What is it about our content that you find especially relevant to your work there at IBM? That's all you do. It's one, it's one email. It's like two lines. Very easy. If they read it on their cell phone, there's no scrolling. And it's just like, they will have a celebrity moment. I don't mm -hmm. care who you are. I don't care what you sell. It's If you have an email newsletter, right? They're paying attention to you, which makes you the celebrity, micro celebrity. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my God, I look, I got an email from Daryl Amy. This is amazing. This is fantastic. Now, again, you don't need to be a rock star, a big name with your name in lights, but it's someone that you are paying attention to because they're paying attention to you. Now, mm. again, let's expand that into LinkedIn. Let's expand that into Facebook Messenger. Let's expand that into who's been texting you, who's been sending you messages, who are your last 10 incoming phone calls. These are all people that you have some level of relationship with. It might be tiny, it might be medium, it might be large, it might be an immediate blood relative. And if you reach out to these people, tell them what you're, what you're after. Uh, in the book, we call this asking for air, asking for advice, insights, and recommendations. This comes from my amazingly smart friend, Michael Goldberg, who is a networking and referral marketing expert. He works in the financial services industry most of the time. He says, asking for air is A-I-R. It's an acronym. I would love your advice, insights, and recommendations. So imagine a quick phone call or a quick message or a quick email. Hey, Barbara, you know, we, we, we met last week on Zoom when we were both doing the XYZ call. I'm looking to meet more financial services professionals in the Phoenix, Arizona area. I would love your advice, insights, and recommendations. It's an easy ask. So here's what you're not doing. You're not saying, hey, who do you know? Right. Saying, hey, <laughs> hey, give me three names. Can I give call your friends? They, they kind of feel the hand coming through the computer. <laughs> they give me three names. No, no, no. So I would love your advice, insights, recommendations. Beautiful. Let's say that you, you want something else. Like, hey, Daryl, I'm looking to get the word out about my new book, Do It Selling. I would love your advice, insights, and recommendations. So you can use that asking for air Beautiful. format to get introductions, to get resources, to get speaking engagements, to connect with people that you might never otherwise be connected with. And the more you ask, the more you get. So that is something very easy that your warm and fuzzy network would be happy to help you with. And we sometimes don't think to ask or we're afraid to ask. And there's no reason for that. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Another thing I absolutely loved from this book, and we're talking about do it selling. And one of the things you need to do is hit pause and go buy, do it selling. Uh, and you're going to, you're going to thank me for this um, is when you talk about ideal clients and I'm you, everyone that hangs out with me knows I'm passionate about ideal clients and that we want everybody to come to the one ideal client away challenge on April 10th through 14th, because you're going to get crystal clear focus, but you have two sentences in this book that I love. So many people when it comes to ideal clients say, well, Daryl, if we focus on ideal clients, we're going to miss all this other business. And you say, target what you want. You can always take what comes along. Unpack that for us if you would. Sure. So, I mean, you're exactly right. And that's why I love that you're doing this challenge and people do need to sign up for the One Ideal Client <laughs> Challenge, by the way. Thank you, David. I, I totally endorse that message because otherwise you're just, you know, you're just blowing in the wind. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying, well, everyone needs what we do. Our product, our service is so amazing. It's so important. Everybody needs what we do. It is really tough to reach everybody. Everybody doesn't have a name and address. Everybody doesn't have a credit card. Everybody doesn't have a wallet. <laughs> Specific individual people have credit cards and wallets and companies and teams and problems that, that, that you solve. So everyone does not have the problem that you solve. Some people have the problem that, that you solve. So we're talking about inbound versus outbound here. So target what you want and you can always take what comes, right? Right. Let's say that you decide to target that we do our best work with accounting firms and we are going to zero in on accounting firms of a certain size and a certain geography. Accounting firms is where it's at. Suddenly you wake up tomorrow morning 
You know where to network. You know what to post. You know where to send. You know what groups to belong to. You know what blogs, portals, communities, and forums to hang out in. You know, you know, if you had to buy a list, and I don't recommend buying lists, but if you had to buy a list, you could say, hey, give me a list of all the accounting firms between 10 and 100 employees that are in XYZ geography. Okay, got it. Here, here's your list. This is called the the mailing list test, right? If you can buy a list, that mm -hmm. is a specific enough target market where you could go to a list company, even though I'm saying that you shouldn't because you yes. shouldn't. Um, but this is where you do your search criteria. This mm -hmm. is who you're looking for on LinkedIn. This is where your reticular activation system <laughs> is totally zeroed in on that kind of company, that kind of prospect that's got that kind of problem. Suddenly, again, I'm going to go to IBM just because it's fun. IBM comes knocking on your door and says, hey, we, we love what you're up to. We'd love to give you a $150,000 check, and we'd love to buy into your product, service, or program. You are not going to say, Daryl, you are not going to say, I'm sorry, we only focus on accounting firms. I'm sorry, IBM. <laughs> right. You're going to have to tear up that $150,000 yeah. check. We are not willing to take your money because that's what everyone's afraid of. Yet, when you say, oh, we're going after A, B, C, D, E, we have a 17 different ideal prospect, you cannot chase 17 different blogs, portals, communities, groups, 17 different groups of associations, 17 different sets of LinkedIn uh, profiles. It's impossible. So when we say target what you want, and that's your outbound, you can, you, whatever comes in the door, if, if you can do the work, if it's going to be a good client, absolutely say yes, absolutely cash the check. That frees a lot of people up. When they hear that advice, like, oh, thank goodness. Now I can really come into the challenge, come into Daryl's challenge. The whole point of Daryl's challenge is target what you want. And then don't worry about, oh, but we're not pursuing this and we're not pursuing that. They will come to you and their, their money is still good after you've decided <laughs> on your ideal target client. I absolutely love that. I'm going to quote you on that many times in the years to come. And, and this is true. Like, unless you're Nike or Coca-Cola, you do not have an unlimited marketing budget. You know, you can't, you can't boil the ocean. And so you need to know your ideal client. This is so, so powerful. So I'm curious, like, what's your favorite tip or trick out of this book? Like, what's your favorite action item? The one you go... Ah, this was this was a zinger. I'm so glad I put this in the book. So it is totally about discovery. I think it starts in chapter 46. Yeah, 40-ish. Okay. 40-ish. It's in the 40s. Yes. And it's about deep dive discovery. And mm. it's about it's about channeling, channeling, take off your sales hat and put on your investigative journalist hat. So suddenly you're 60 minutes, you're Barbara Walters, you're Oprah. And you are interviewing these people and you are uncovering and discovering and peeling the onion of exactly what's going on. And what we talk about there is that you can't you can't just pepper them with questions because then it starts to feel like an interrogation and mm -hmm. no one likes being interrogated. But why do people or why did people open up to Oprah Winfrey when she had the, the daily talk show? Because she would sit on that couch and she would stare into their soul and she would ask a very simple question. And then she would listen. She would listen with her entire being. She would be fully and totally present so that people told Oprah things that they did not tell their spouse, things that their children did not know, things that their best friend on earth did not know. They just met Oprah 10 minutes prior, and they are telling her every secret, every skeleton in the closet, because it was a safe comforting environment where these people felt completely heard. And she created this environment by very straight line questioning. And again, peeling the onion, getting to the issue behind the issue, the problem behind the problem, the question behind the question. And relentlessly with love and with care and with concern and with genuine curiosity, ask the right question in the right way and they just opened up. They opened up like they've never opened up before. So we teach you how to do that in those discovery chapters. And we also talk about how a really great discovery call is also like cross-examination in a courtroom, that you never want to ask a question that you don't want the witness to hear themselves say out loud. Hmm. And then we talk about follow-up questions. 
things like, and what else, and who else, and where else, and why else is this important, and how else will this have an impact, and, and what else will happen if we don't fix this, mm. and just literally staying in that conversation so that people open up like they've never opened up before, and it's the person that masters this level of discovery where you set the context of value and the contrast of scale between the scale, size, and scope of their problem versus what the investment is to work with you. And you will start closing sale after sale after sale because you are getting to the real truth of their situation and you are literally giving them exactly what they want and exactly what they need so that they get the help that they that they want. So beautiful. I'm really, really excited I've, as you mentioned earlier, I've gotten to thumb through this book since it came in the mail last week, and now I'm, I'm getting ready and very fired up about going through this chapter by chapter. Once again, everybody, these are great chapters. They're they're way shorter than the chapters in Revenue Growth Engine, so you're going to love that. They're high impact, and you're going to get a lot done. Uh, as we wrap up, what words of encouragement would you leave for our professionals that are out there that are maybe struggling a little bit right now and, and are, are saying, is this, you know, can I really do this? Is this, is this really going to come on, man? I've seen, I've seen this before. What would you say to the the professionals that are, are going, okay, guys, this sounds good, but is this really the real deal? Right. So, so two quick things, one from early on in the book and then one from almost at the end early on, I say true sales success is a little bit, harder than it looks, but it's a lot easier than you've been making it. <laughs> and then later in the book, we talk about the, the best way, the best way to improve your sales results and improve your sales process is the more genuinely you can be you, right? With nothing to fear, nothing to hide, just, and, and you don't want to show up looking, uh, you know, you don't want to show up rather uh, wanting to sound smart because that's not really who you are. And you don't want to show up desperate to be liked because that's mm. also not who you are. So let all of those things go and use the philosophy, nothing to fear, nothing to hide in every sales conversation from initial contact all the way to signed contract. And sales will become a joy and a pleasure instead of stuckness and fear and rejection and all those things that we usually say. So the key to better sales for you is to be more you. And don't worry, go back to what my mentor told me, don't even worry about being a better salesperson, be a better be a better person and more sales will happen. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been a joy. This conversation has been so powerful and I think you've given a major gift to the world with this book. So I want to encourage everybody listening in to go grab a copy and you're going to love this book outside the book. Uh, how can people get more David Newman in their life? Sure. So our main website is do it marketing. Uh, and there's a do it marketing book, of mm -hmm. course, for the marketing folks, but even 30% of that book was a sales book. So if you go to doitmarketing.com, there's a blog. We have some free training at doitmarketing.com slash webinar. We also have a free 37 page PDF free download. That's at doitmarketing.com slash manifesto. And then finally, we have the selling show. And Daryl, I am publicly inviting you to be my guest Ooh, on the selling yes. show. And you can jump into Fine. all 300 plus 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 episodes at doitmarketing.com awesome. slash podcast. Well, I am so fired up and I am so grateful uh, for the time you've uh, shared with us here today. Um, David, just thank you from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of everybody in the Revenue Growth Podcast community. You're a rock star. Keep doing it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. And thank you to everybody in the Revenue Growth Podcast community. Look, this is Q2. It's upon us. We're in the game and everyone is out there being innovative, driving, taking action, thriving, doing it. Uh, and so I'm so grateful to be a part of this community. I love to hear from you. A huge thank you to everybody who is liking and most importantly, reviewing the Revenue Growth Podcast that helps us spread the word uh, so we can get more people on board. And you know our mission here, 
help 10,000 purpose-driven businesses double revenue so we can create meaningful work, a million new jobs, 10 billion in new giving, and we're doing it together and it's going to be amazing. I look forward to seeing you at the One Ideal Client Away Challenge, oneidealclientaway.com. Make sure to use the code podcast when you enroll for a special discount. And this is going to be an incredible, incredible opportunity to get crystal clear focus on your ideal client, the types of clients that can create a flywheel of exponential growth for your business. And as David said earlier, don't panic. You can still take orders from the other ones, but you want to make sure that your best marketing and sales efforts are focused. We've got a great roster of guests coming up throughout the spring and summer. Make sure to like or subscribe. And until next time, let's get going and let's get growing.